towards the end of our last class we had a brief discussion going on on the two block oscillator right if you recall this on the two block oscillator we had these two masses m1 and m2 we very slowly compressed it by an amount x not or elongated it by an amount x not and released the whole thing preserving the center of mass the center of mass was fixed here didn't move and then the two masses executed simple harmonic motion about the center of mass the two masses executed simple harmonic motion about the center of mass it was this was fixed as if this length was fixed this was the natural length of the spring to which m1 was con, uh, was connected this was the fixed length of the spring to which m2 was connected the natural length to which m2 was connected and the two masses m1 and m2 executed simple harmonic motion with omega equal to root k by mu where mu was the reduced mass of the system right we also from from center of mass considerations we also looked at how to find the amplitude of oscillation of the two masses right now one thing that i want to tell you before i proceed in general that's a very general remark not related to the two body system but in general related to any two point particles right any two particles let's say m1 and m2 right and let's say v1 is the velocity of this and v2 is the velocity of this hmm? then the kinetic the center of mass the center of mass has a velocity which is m1 v1 plus m2 v2 by m1 plus m2 that's the velocity of the center of mass right that's the velocity of the center of mass now the two masses have a certain velocity as seen by the center of mass frame right for example velocity of one as seen by the center of mass is going to be what v1 minus vcm v1 minus vcm right so which is going to be v1 minus m1 v1 plus m2 v2 divided by m1 plus m2 yes or no right then this m1 v1 will get cancelled with this m1 v1 and what you are left with is m2 into v1 minus v2 divided by m1 plus m2 is it not so that's the velocity of one as seen by the center of mass frame velocity of one in the center of mass frame what's the velocity of two in the center of mass frame it's going to be m1 by m1 plus m2 into v2 minus v1 right that's going to be the velocity of two in the center of mass frame now the kinetic energy of the system as seen in the center of mass frame the kinetic energy of the system as seen in the center of mass frame is going to be kinetic energy as seen in the center of mass frame kinetic energy as seen in the center of mass frame is going to be half of m1 mod v1 cm whole square plus half of m2 mod v2 cm whole square right that's the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame that's the kinetic energy of the system in the center of mass frame which is going to be as you can readily see if i replace all of it then half of m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 to mod v1 minus v2 whole square you can check that out right which but what's m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 reduce mass. reduce mass of the system and this is half mu 
magnitude of v rel square this is the relative velocity between the two particles this is the relative velocity between the two particles so mod of v rel square that's the kinetic energy of a two particle system in the center of mass frame it's a very important result i do want you to understand this and take notice of this the velocity the kinetic energy of a two particle system in the center of mass frame is going to be half of mu mu is the reduced mass of the system into magnitude of the relative velocity squared square of the relative velocity of the two constituent particles right a very important result do remember this now one more thing that i want you to just notice is that the velocity of the center of mass is given by m1 v1 plus m2 v2 plus mn vn for a system of particles the velocity of the center of mass is given by this isn't it hmm? which means i could write this as m1 into v1 minus vcm plus m2 into v2 minus vcm plus mn into vn minus vcm equal to 0 could i write it this way rearranging the terms what is this this is the linear momentum of m1 in the center of mass frame this is the linear momentum of m2 in the center of mass frame linear momentum of mn in the center of mass frame which really means that the linear momentum of a collection of particles in the center of mass frame will always be zero the linear momentum in the center of mass frame of a collection of particles will always be zero that's extremely important to understand right so linear momentum of a system as seen by the center of mass will always be zero clear now let me get back to business See if I had a system of particles, let's say this is mass 2m, the spring initially in its natural state, this is mass 3m, this is the natural state of the spring, the two masses connected by a spring of force constant k and say this mass at this instant is given an impulse v and this mass is given an impulse such that this has a velocity v leftwards hmm. now how would the system respond this kind of a system is a little different from the earlier system where when the spring was in its natural state the spring was the center of mass was fixed in this case the center of mass is not fixed do you realize that the center of mass in this case has a velocity the velocity of the center of mass in this case is 3 mv minus 2 mv mv by 5 mv by 5 m so v by 5 is the velocity of the center of mass do you realize that this is a system in which the velocity of the center of mass is v by 5 now how would this system respond let's understand how this system would respond what would be uh, really the kind of motion executed by 2m and 3m now to put it very precisely the way things will happen here is that in the center of mass frame in the center of mass frame that means if you are an observer sitting upon the center center of mass 
Then with respect to the center of mass, the two particles 2m and 3m will execute simple harmonic motion, will execute oscillation, will execute oscillation. And will execute oscillation with angular frequency omega equal to root k divided by the reduced mass of the system. In this case, the reduced mass of the system is 2m into 3m divided by 5m. 6m by 5 is the reduced mass of the system. Yes or no? m1, m2 by m1 plus m2, right? K is the force constant. So, a center of mass will perceive the two masses to still execute simple harmonic motion with angular frequency equal to root k by mu. From the ground frame, from the ground frame, however things will be different. The system would bodily advance with the velocity of Vcm, the center of mass representing translation of the system to the right. So it's as if the system moves in this direction. If you are if you are sitting on the ground, you will see the following happen. This is how it's going to move. Just physically imagine this is how it would move. But if you are sitting on the center of mass, if you are sitting on the center of mass, then this is what would happen. This is what would happen. Pure oscillation from the center of mass perspective in the ground frame, there would be translation as well as oscillation in the ground frame. That is how this system would physically respond. You know what I am saying? Right? Now, let us look at the center of mass perspective which is about the oscillation of the system. Let us look at the center of mass perspective, which is about, like I said, it will be pure oscillation from the center of mass frame. Let us understand exactly what is going to happen while you are sitting on the center of mass. Right? One thing for sure, sitting, observing everything from the center of mass, you will see pure oscillation of angular frequency omega, which is root k by mu. Now, In the center of mass frame, this is time t equal to 0. On the center of mass frame, then let me look at the velocity of this with respect to the center of mass, initial velocity when the spring is unstretched. The velocity of this in the center of mass frame is going to be v minus v by 5, which is 4 v by 5 to the right. Oh, this is 3m. The mass 2m, realize, has a velocity v plus v by 5, that is 6 v by 5 to the left, as seen by the center of mass frame. How do you know if you have not made a calculation mistake? In the center of mass frame, check the total linear momentum of the system. 12 mv by 5 to the right, 12 mv by 5 to the left. Zero linear momentum in the center of mass frame, always cardinal. Absolutely cardinal. Right? Now, so this is the story of the two masses at this instant of time. This is the story of the two masses at this instant of time. Now, now. Eventually, in the center of mass frame, the spring will elongate. The masses will move further, the elongation would result. Initially, the spring will elongate. The spring will elongate. After a while, what would be a state of maximum elongation for the spring? What would be the state of maximum elongation for the spring? When the velocity of the two masses in the center of mass frame becomes zero. If the velocity of the two masses in the center of mass frame becomes zero, then the spring would have reached its maximum elongation, yes or no? And is it possible that in the center of mass frame, the velocity of one becomes zero and the other one doesn't become zero? No, it's not possible, it's not possible. That means the velocities of the two masses in the center of mass frame should become zero exactly at the same time. In the center of mass frame, the velocity of this becomes zero. In the center of mass frame, the velocity of this becomes zero. This then would be a state of 
maximum elongation right the velocity of this becomes zero in the center of mass frame the velocity of this becomes zero in the center of mass frame how about it Now, now, which means in the ground frame, what's the velocity of this? V by 5 to the right, what's the velocity of this in the ground frame? V by 5 to the right in the ground frame. But in the center of mass frame, this is this, is this right? Now, what's the maximum elongation thus produce? Question is, what's the maximum elongation? Okay, I can apply work energy theorem. In the center of mass frame, right? In the center of mass frame, I apply work energy theorem. What's the kinetic energy of the system in the center of mass frame to begin with? Half mu into V rel squared. What is V rel? 2V. V, v rel is 2V. Yes or no? What's the kinetic energy of the system in the center of mass frame? Half of mu. Mu is 6 m by 5 into V rel squared means 2 V squared. That's the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame, right? This becomes 0 in a state of maximum elongation. This becomes 0. So, change in kinetic energy is minus of this, right? Where does it go? It goes towards potential energy of the system, which means x max is the maximum elongation brought about if x max is the maximum elongation brought about then this amount of change of kinetic energy reflects as change of elastic potential energy in the spring applying work energy theorem with respect to the center of mass so this this is half k x max squared yes or no right Sorry, this has V rel. Whether I take with respect to center of mass or I take with respect to London or Patna or Paris, V rel will be the same. Do you realize that? Take V rel of this or take V rel of this. It's going to be the same. That's not going to change at all. Relative velocity will be the same, isn't it? Will relative velocity depend on the frame of reference? That's going to be the same, isn't it? Because V rel has in that VCM has got cancelled, isn't it? So, V rel is going to be the same. You, you look at this, it's still 2V, isn't it? Look at this, 2V. V rel will still be 2V. So, I didn't bother too much about it, right? So, this enables computation of the maximum elongation in the spring while the whole thing is still translating, while the whole thing is still translating, right? Now, after this, what happens? After this, again, analyzing everything in the... Yes, please. Yes, yes. Yes, sit down. Sit down. This will give me the displacement in the center of mass frame. For example, this particle, right? What's the displacement in the center of mass frame? The amplitude of motion of this, isn't it? From here to here, in the center of mass frame, it has moved by an amount equal to the amplitude. Now, what is the amplitude of this? The amplitude of this is going to be, the this is the mean position for 3M because no forces are acting. V equal to A omega. Omega is known. So, the amplitude of this can be known. Yes or no? Right? Now, once I know the amplitude. So, in the center of mass frame, it has moved by an amount A. And then, look at how, the, how much the center of mass is moved in that time. V by 5 into T. That time... I know because <clears throat> from this position to this position is moving from the mean position to an extreme position which is right. t by 4. Right. Isn't it? Time period, time period is 2 pi by omega and here to here would be t by 4. Isn't it? t by 4. So, in this time the center of mass has moved by an amount v by 5 into t by 4 and this has moved by an amount a. So, you add the two that would be the displacement of this mass as seen in the Right, right. Hmm. 
now so far so good right all of it makes sense to all of you now from this point onwards what happens everything in the center of mass frame because see reason i say it's best to deal with this in the center of mass frame because i can convert all the velocities to the ground frame by accommodating this v by phi see at this point at this point i know the velocity of this in the ground frame v by phi v by phi i know the velocity of this in the ground frame because this was just this now the spring starts to come back to its natural length right so from this state it will come back to this state of the spring this state of the spring but what about the state of the two masses let's also understand what would be the state of the two masses 2m and 3m while the spring returns to its natural length this was the natural length of the spring in order to return to its natural length what would be the state of the masses in terms of the center of mass let's examine that can i wipe this uh, this stuff so when it comes back to its natural length the spring comes back to its natural length now when the spring comes back to its natural length the velocity of this in the center of mass would be 6v by 5 to the right and the velocity of this in the center of mass frame would be 4v by 5 to the left in the center of mass frame as seen by the center of mass as seen by the center of mass yes or no but as seen by a ground observer as seen by so this is the center of mass observer this was the state of the two masses when the spring returned to its natural length as seen by a center of mass observer these are the velocities but as seen by a ground observer what would be the velocities of 2m and 3m hey. velocity of this in the center of mass plus the velocity of the center of mass you will have to add isn't it this was the relative velocity as seen by the center of mass add to it the velocity of the center of mass you will get the velocity of the particle in the ground frame yes or no so it's going to be 6v by 5 plus v by 5 that is 7v by 5 would be the velocity of 2m in the ground frame now yes or no this is for yes this is 4v by 5 to the left center of mass is minus v by 5 so this would be in the ground frame 3v by 5 to the left right so in the ground frame the velocity of this is 3v by 5 right now obviously in the center of mass the spring will once again start to compress so this was spring in its natural state maximum elongation coming back to its natural state and now ready to compress now ready to compress <coughs> again while the spring compresses the spring force will kill this velocity will also kill this velocity in the center of mass frame right in a state of maximum compression the velocities of the two masses will simultaneously will will become zero the velocities of the two masses simultaneously become zero in a state of maximum compression in a state of maximum compression in a state of maximum compression the velocities of the two masses in the center of mass frame becomes zero in the center of mass frame it's going to become zero that means in the ground frame what's the velocity of 2m v by 5 to the right what's the velocity of 3m v by 5 to the right so both in a state of maximum and minimum compression a ground observer will report on the two masses the same velocity yes or no right so now this, this is you must have a very clear idea of what's happening in the center of mass frame if you want to look at everything from the ground frame 
then superimpose whatever is happening in the center of mass frame to what's happening to the center of mass. The center of mass would have moved by an amount in a time equal to 5 seconds. The center of mass would have moved by an amount v by 5 into 5 to the right. And you might want to superimpose that to the oscillation that is brought about now. The important thing is one thing I told you you can you can uh, calculate the maximum compression and the maximum elongation with the help of half mu v rel square is half kx max square applying work energy theorem in the center of mass frame. The other thing that you could do is look when let me start with the system ab initio. You know what I started with on the system but so far so good right you are all in tune with me. Hmm? What we started with was the following. In the ground frame, this is what we started with. Hmm? The center of mass having a velocity v by 5. Right? This, this is just another perspective to this. Uh, it could just be a substitute to whatever I have told you something that you might want to use at some point of time. It's important that you at least understand what I'm saying. It's easy though. Now, in this state, what's the total kinetic energy of the system that we started with? The spring was in its natural state. What was the total kinetic energy of the system? Let me call it E total. E total. In the ground frame. And now, now everything in the ground frame. Right, half of 2m into v squared plus half of 3m into v squared. That's the total kinetic energy of the system, total energy of the system, so to say. Right now, what we can say is the total translational energy, if someone has to say, that means out of this E total, actually, you know, this total energy has two constituents. One is energy of oscillation. The other one is energy of translation. There is that energy of oscillation in this E total and then there is that energy of translation. The energy of translation we might want to imagine. Energy of translation. The energy of translation we might want to imagine as half of 5m into v by 5 squared. That's the energy of translation. The oscillation energy would be the difference of these two. The oscillation energy would be the difference of these two. Energy of oscillation is E total minus E translation, which you can calculate and when this, when the spring is in its maximum compressed state, maximum compressed state, this would appear as half kx max squared. This would appear as half kx max squared, this energy of oscillation. That will also enable you to calculate the maximum compression or the maximum elongation that could be brought about in the spring. Got me? Hmm? Now, so far so good, right? Not a problem. Let me know if I could wipe this off. So you precisely understand what's happening in the center of mass frame. And it's best that we analyze the system in the center of mass frame in view of the fact that, you know, eventually we, we could map it back to the ground frame with the factor y by 5, v by 5, v by 5 for this, for example, you know, with the velocity of the center of mass available to us, we could convert it back to the ground frame as and when we want. So, initially might as well just work around the center of mass frame so that it reduces to pure uh, simple harmonic motion of the two masses and the regular uh, system that we have studied, you know, the, um, the regular two body oscillation that we looked into in our last class. Now, 
let me vary this a little bit but so far so good right you're absolutely clear about whatever i have said huh? let me change the situation a little bit can i wipe this off Let's say there are two masses M1 and M2. The spring in its natural state, the spring in its natural state, hmm? and the two masses at rest. The two masses at rest initially. And I apply a force F. I apply a force F, a constant force F on mass M1. I apply a constant force F on mass M1. I now want to figure out the maximum and minimum elongation in the spring. Maximum and minimum elongation in the spring I want to figure out. Okay, now this kind of a system once again, I'll analyze in the center of mass frame, which is an accelerated frame. In this case, realize that the center of mass is accelerated. Yes or no? This is the center of mass. The acceleration of the center of mass, as you would witness, is F by M1 plus M2. That's the acceleration of the center of mass. Yes or no? Right? If the center of mass is accelerated, then on the two masses, there would be a zero force acting. Right, there would be a pseudo force acting on the two masses in the center of mass frame, which is an accelerated frame. So, there is going to be a pseudo force on this mass M1 ACM this way, right? And on this mass, the pseudo force is M2 AC. It's the pseudo force on this mass. Let's say in a certain time, in a certain time, M1 gets displaced by an amount x1 to the right and M2 gets displaced by an amount or x2 to the left. M1 gets displaced by an amount x1 to the right, M2 gets displaced by an amount x2 to the left. And let's say this is the state where the spring has either the maximum elongation or the minimum elongation. Now one fact which should have dawned upon you by this time is that in a state of maximum or minimum elongation, the velocities of the masses at the ends must be the same. You know what I am saying? In a state of maximum compression or minimum compression, always. Maximum elongation or minimum elongation, the velocities of the two masses must be the same at that point. That's very important. In all these cases, this will always happen. The velocities of the two connectors at the end must be the same in a state of maximum or minimum elongation. Hmm? So, let's say in a state of maximum or minimum elongation, this is advanced by an amount x1 to the right and this is moved by an amount x2 to the left, right? And when that happens, if the velocity of this is v at that instant, then the velocity of this will also be v to the right, would also be v to the right. They must have the same velocity at an instant of maximum and minimum elongation and all of it in this ground frame of reference, all of it in the ground frame of reference. Full of what's confusion. In this case, momentum is not conserved because there is an external force acting. So, momentum is not conserved in this case. I know, external force, it's adding momentum to the system. Right. So, in a state of maximum or minimum elongation, the velocities of the two masses must be the same. Right. 
Now, let me apply work energy theorem in the center of mass frame. Let me apply work energy theorem in the center of mass frame. Work energy theorem in the center of mass frame. Let's do that. Hmm? Now, work done by F is going to be F into X1. Right? Is it not? F into X1 is the work done by F. Work done by this unit of force would be minus M1 ACM into X1. Right? Work done by this is going to be M2 ACM into X2. X2 has been the displacement to the left, same as the direction of M2 ACM. So, work done by the second theory of force is going to be M2 ACM X2. Right? And this must be change of kinetic energy of the system in the center of mass frame. We started with rest. So, kinetic energy in the center of mass initially was 0. And in this state, in a state of maximum or minimum elongation, V rel is 0. So, kinetic energy in the center of mass frame once again is 0. Yes or no? Right? So, change in kinetic energy in the center of mass is 0. Right? Yes or no? Work done by, and there is, sorry, there is also work done by the spring force. There is work done by the spring force, which is half K X1 plus X2 whole square. That's a change in protection. Work done by all forces, real and pseudo, must be change in kinetic energy plus Change of potential energy of the spring. This is change of potential energy of the spring. Half k into x1 plus x2 whole square. Does it make sense to you? Where x1 plus x2 is the elongation. Maximum as well as minimum. Right? So, if you end up getting two values of x1 plus x2. One must be the maximum elongation. The other one must be the minimum elongation. Both these subscribe to the same physical condition of the two masses acquiring the same velocities. In a state of maximum or minimum elongation. Now, I can replace this ACM by F by M1 plus M2. So, this gives me fx1 into m2 by m1 plus m2 plus fx2 into m2 by m1 plus m2 equals half k x1 plus x2 whole square. Right? Which gives me, once again, Fm2 by M1 plus M2. See? Fm2 by M1 plus M2 into X1 plus X2 is half K X1 plus X2 whole square. Two values of X1 plus X2 you get. One is zero. Isn't it? One of the values of X1 plus X2 is? 0. That means the minimum elongation is 0. Minimum elongation is 0. That means the spring is never getting compressed. The spring in this case is never getting compressed. So, the minimum elongation is 0. The maximum, the other value of x1 plus x2 gives me the maximum elongation. The other value of x1 plus x2 is how much? Is 2f m2 by m1 plus m2 into that's the other value of x1 plus x2. 2 at m2 by m1 plus m2 by k. That's, that must be the maximum elongation produced in the spring. That must be the maximum elongation produced in the spring. 
करते हैं एफ इज एक्टिंग ऑन एम वन सो सूडो फोर्स आई हैव टेकन दैट एंड एफ स्टिल एक्टिंग ऑन एम वन एफ इज स्टिल एक्टिंग ऑन एम वन it's not acting on the center of mass it's acting on m1 it's in fact could be realized with uh, the center of mass but otherwise it's a real force acting on m1 the work done by this force will still be this hmm? so now can i write this off now to just tell you another some some relevant variations around this two block systems one very common variation for this two block system this case of a truck let's say truck of mass m1 mass m2 hmm. and i compress the spring a little bit i push this mass so that either the spring gets compressed or elongated let's see what happens to the motion of m1 let's examine what would happen to the motion of m1 in the ground frame in the ground frame let's see what happens so in the ground frame let's say when this moves by an amount x2 as seen by the ground observer then do you realize that there are no external forces acting on the system then m1 must move to the right to preserve the position of the center of mass of the system m1 moves by an amount x1 to the right so that the center of mass of the system is preserved at the same spot in a manner that m1 x1 must be equal to m2 x2 yes or no no if this was with respect to the cart then it would have been m1 plus m2 see the earlier raft problem the distance moved on the raft was with respect to the raft not as seen on the ground frame right so this is as seen by the ground observer x2 moves left uh, x m2 moves x2 units to the left m1 moves x1 units to the right in the ground frame if this was with respect to the cart then what you said would have been right right then then it would have been m2 x2 equals m1 plus m2 x1 if this was x2 with respect to the cart go back to the raft problem that i dealt with earlier so that was distance moved on the raft l was the distance moved on the raft means with respect to the raft this was distance moved by m2 as seen by the ground frame that's the difference huh please please make sure you understand this now by what amount has the spring got compressed x1 plus x isn't it the spring then would have got compressed by about x1 plus x2 yes or no and therefore the force of the mass m2 is going to be k into x1 plus x2 to the right restoring force this is the restoring force isn't it on the mass m2 k into x1 plus x2 so restoring force on m2 is of magnitude k into x1 plus x2 where x1 is the displacement of m2 with respect to its mean position 
This was the equilibrium position of M2, right? This could be written as K into <coughs> X, X2 plus X1, which is M2 X2 by M1. Yes or no? Right? Which is the same as K by M1 into M1 plus M2 into X2. That's a restoring force proportional to the displacement from the main position. So the motion of M2 must be simple harmonic, right? With the four equivalent force constant for the system being this. The omega of oscillation then would be root K of the system M1 plus M2 by M1 M2. Which is root K by mu. Root K by mu. This again is identical to the regular two body oscillator that we have studied. Does it make sense to all of you? Hmm? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, if you really think about it physically, I mean, you could unfold this mass M1 and bring it here. And it will resemble the two block uh, oscillator. I mean, just imagine this two. Open up and bring this mass M1. There is no physical difference between this situation and that situation, isn't it? That's the way we can look at it. There was a mass m, a spring of force constant k, mass 2m at rest on a smooth harmless surface and I gave this an impulse j, I imparted an impulse j to the mass m, right? I imparted an impulse j to the mass m. And the mass m will develop a velocity when? The mass m develops a velocity which would be j by m, yes or no? Would be j by m? Hmm? The velocity of this will still remain zero, right? The center of mass will feel the heat of J. The center of mass will develop a velocity which would be J by 3. That's the velocity of the center of mass. Hmm? So now what would happen? There would be translation as well as oscillation. There would be translation as well as oscillation, right? Like, like before, it would reduce to a system that we've already investigated. And the omega of oscillation, the omega of oscillation would be root k divided by mu, use the reduced mass of the system, m into 2m divided by 3m, m into 2m divided by 3m would be the reduced mass of this system, right? What then? In the center of mass frame, what then would be the amplitude of oscillation of this? If this is the velocity of this mass in the mean position, if A is the amplitude, then this would be A omega. Omega known, so you would know the amplitude of oscillation of small m. You would then know the amplitude of oscillation of small m. Got me? Sometimes they would give you mass M1, another mass M2, spring of force constant K1, 
spring of force constant k2 right and you would bring the two masses closer together and release you would bring the two masses closer together and release realize that essentially when you compress it by a certain amount x this will elongate by that much amount so the so the force that would act on the two masses would be actually k1 plus k2 into x right so essentially this could be reduced to m1 m2 with the two springs being like this k1 and k2 will it not get reduced to this because even in this say if i compress it by an amount x then the restoring force would be k1 the outward force would be the force in the spring would be k1 plus k2 into x same with this isn't it so this could be reduced to this so these are like k1 and k2 in parallel so this would become k1 plus k2 so it's like a two body oscillator m1 and m2 with a k equal to k1 plus k2 it will execute simple harmonic motion with omega equal to root k by reduced mass m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 you know right it makes sense to all of you now having said this